का फर्क मालूम है आपको बेलेबल ऑफेंस मीन्स आई एम सॉरी एनी आइडिया वॉट इज बेलेबल ऑफेंस Now, if you go to section two, you'll find these definitions: bailable offence, non-bailable offence, cognizable offence, non-cognizable offence. Bailable offence means the offence in which the police has the power to grant you bail. And non-bailable offences are those offences where the police does not have the power to grant you bail. And what is bail? Any idea? temporary release from the custody of the police temporary release why because you are not acquitted or discharged you are simply released from the custody so it's a temporary release from the custody of police is bail and bailable offense means where the police is empowered to grant you bail and non bailable where the police does not have the power to grant you bail and what is the cognizance and non cognizance offense is cognizable offense cognizable offense means where the arrest can be made by the police without a warrant non cognizable offense means the police needs a warrant to arrest a person so cognizable offenses are those offenses which are serious in nature serious offenses are called cognizable offense the offenses the punishment of which is normally more than 3 years and where will you find that of punishment and offense in ipc and that is why schedule 1 gives you a table and a chart of ipc sections then the nature whether it is bailable or non bailable cognizable non cognizable and by which court it is going to be tried so you'll find that chart and table under schedule 1 of the crpc is that clear so we have come up to chapter 7 hmm now chapter 8 onwards we go back to the powers of police yahan tak aap aaye court ne compel kiya police ne arrest kiya Hmm? What is chapter eight? Security for peace. Security to keep peace and good behavior. Security to keep peace and good behavior. ये crime होने से पहले. Hmm? this is the job of the police to ensure that there is peace in the society and the citizens must have good behavior ye preventive provision section 106 onwards up to section 124 security to keep peace and good behavior from 106 to 124 hmm isme agar aap dekhenge to judicial magistrate ke sath sath executive magistrate bhi mention hai preventive provisions mein executive magistrate bhi mention and who's executive magistrate ha huh? dm deputy dm and sometimes these executive powers are handed over to superior police officers also theek hai तो बहुत सारे पावर्स एग्जैक्टिव मैजिस्ट्रेट को दिए हुए हैं एंड देर इज अ डिफरेंस बिटवीन जुडिशियल मैजिस्ट्रेट एंड एग्जैक्टिव मैजिस्ट्रेट 
executive magistrate comes from administration side not from judiciary judicial magistrate comes from judiciary तो आप चैप्टर एट में पाएंगे कि कुछ सेक्शंस में एग्जैक्यूटिव मैजिस्ट्रेट को पावर दी हुई है और कुछ सेक्शंस में जुडिशियल मैजिस्ट्रेट की पावर है तो जब लार्जर ऑफेंस की बात आती है तो जुडिशियल मैजिस्ट्रेट और जब प्रिवेंटिव मेजर्स की बात है तो एग्जैक्यूटिव मैजिस्ट्रेट जैसे कई बार किसी क्राउड को डिस्पर्स करने के लिए पुलिस को लाठीचार्ज करना पड़ता है बट ये पावर स्पॉट पर खड़े हुए पुलिस कांस्टेबल को नहीं है कई बार पुलिस को अश्रु गैस फायर करने पड़ते ये पावर उस कांस्टेबल को नहीं है कई बार वायलेंट क्राउड है उसको कंट्रोल करने के लिए शूट का ऑर्डर होता है पर वो शूट करने का ऑर्डर और शूट करने की पावर उस स्पॉट के पुलिसमैन के पास नहीं है कई बार आपने देखा होगा एक बड़ी ग्रेव और प्रोवोकेटिव सिचुएशन में पुलिस फायर उस पुलिसमैन जिसने फायर कर दिया उस पर ट्रायल चल जाता है चलता है ना पुलिसमैन पर ट्रायल बिकॉज देन ही वायलेटेड दट पावर एंड द लॉ एंश्योर्स दैट जस्ट बिकॉज यू हैव अ गन डज नॉट मीन दैट यू हैव अ पावर टू शूट वरना फिर आप में और गैंगस्टर में फर्क क्या इनडिस्क्रिप्शनरीली अगर आप फायर कर रहे हैं शूट कर रहे हैं तो फिर तो आप गैंगस्टर हो गए जब मर्जी आई जहां चाहे बंदूक चला दी सो इन द एंटायर सीआरपीसी देर इज नो पावर गिवन टू द पुलिस कांस्टेबल एट द स्पॉट आई द टू डू लाठी चार्ज और टू शूट अश्रु गैस और टेयर गैस विच वी आर कॉमनली टॉक टॉक और हर्ड अबाउट फायरिंग अगर करने का ऑर्डर भी होता है तो उसका भी प्रोसीजर है दैट यू कैनॉट शूट एट द वाइटल पार्ट ऑफ द बॉडी यू हैव टू शूट एट लेग फर्स्ट सो दैट द पर्सन शुड नॉट एस्केप and then you can if you can arrest you can arrest unless the person is so violent that he has armament and he's counter shooting on you and your life with yourself is in danger then it's a different story but till the point it is possible the policeman has to ensure that he should not shoot on the vital part of the body and he should not snatch the life so all these provisions are there therefore the executive magistrate in the given situation on the basis of the assessment of the situation has to order whether the situation demands lathi charge or demands to disperse the crowd demands that tear gas and if the crowd is very very violent attacking on the police then to sometimes shoot but even in those grave situations normally the order is to shoot to disperse sometimes the police is directed to shoot in the air with a warning that please disperse otherwise consequences can be grave so all these things are to control the crowd even instead of a crowd if there is a single criminal and he is trying to escape and he has armaments where he is shooting on the police team even then 
the police has to first give warning to stop to surrender to drop the arms the police cannot behave irresponsibly like a gangster to start shooting in the counter of a shooting hmm? now moving ahead these are the provisions in chapter 8 chapter 9 talks about maintenance of wives and children section 125 to 128 maintenance of wives and children ye bada kamal ka hai aur crpc mein kyun include kiya gaya hai ye aapke man mein question aana chahiye maintenance of wives and children kya matlab hai is baat ka aur kyun ye crpc mein The maintenance means here that every person is obliged to maintain his wife and his children. I'm sorry? And parents. And parents also, but the chapter's title does not talk of parents. Inside it is yes, there is parents also. But if you read the title of the chapter 9, it talks about maintenance of wives and children inside yes Acha, parents bhi hai, to achhi baat hai. Acha. good clap for her Are? Kya naam beta aapka? Jyoti Bhandari Jyoti clap Bada? Haan, zara... Aisa kar rahe log ke, wah, wah. Jyoti tumhe pata hai kya Mere, mujhe bhi to pata hai Main kyo taali bajau? अरे भैया ऐसे क्यों कर रहे क्लैप मींस सुनाई तो दे यस एडमिरेशन महसूस तो हो कि हां भाई आप एडमायर कर रहे हैं ज्योति को इतना हेजिटेशन क्यों है एडमायर करने में हेजिटेशन करिएगा अब्यूज करने में हम वेल मेंटेनेंस ऑफ Wives, children, and parents is included into CRPC for two reasons. First, because if a person or a citizen is not responsible enough to his own family, then the consequences of the family will be quite disastrous. There are chances that the persons who are totally dependent on the strong member of the family may indulge in breaching law. It may lead to vagrancy. The second reason is that if those people want to go for a civil proceedings to get maintenance, generally it is a perception that the civil proceedings are longer. So it may take a very long time to secure an order for maintenance. Therefore, this was included to CRPC that quickly an initial amount of a maintenance would be awarded by the court to sustain oneself, to survive, to get a civil maintenance order so as a lawyer of tomorrow remember that even if you have initiated a maintenance proceedings under section 125 of the crpc you are not prohibited or precluded from moving a civil court also for a maintenance because generally the maintenance awarded by the criminal court in 125 is very minuscule The maintenance amount awarded in CRPC is only for the purpose of your sustenance, for survival, to secure your rights in the civil court. 